You know, Christians uh, sometimes have a, a lot of, I, I guess, rituals um, that they that are part of their Christian walk. And uh, they have a lot of traditions that's part of their Christian walk. With some of them being man-made and, and which they consider it gospel. But God is requir requiring one thing from us. And if we can get this one thing right, we can get everything else right. And when the lawyer asked Jesus, he said, you know, uh, he said, what do I need to do? He said, you are to love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Love, to love him, and to love your neighbor as yourself. So if we love him, the rest of it doesn't matter. We'll take care of what's right. And we'll try to turn from what's wrong. Amen. 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 If, we, if we love him, I'm not talking about what you do. I'm talking about something that goes on inside your heart. If you love him and have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, that's what it's going to take. Amen. You say, I, I've heard people, you know, I, I, you ask them, uh, are you a Christian? They say, well, I go to church. I pay my tithes. I try to do things, you know, for people. And, and really, that wasn't the question you asked them. Are you a Christian? Christ-like. Are you a Christian? Amen. Do you have a relationship with Jesus Christ? Amen. Amen. We've got to have that. Yes. We've got to have that. Yes. This is the last message in this four-part <laughs> series of A Journey to the Birth of Jesus. And uh, this, there's this picture right here. And it says, journey to see Jesus. And it's, it's where Mary had uh, anointed his feet. And, and when we finish, get to the end of this message, you'll understand. You'll understand why I put that there instead of someone walking to Jesus. Because it's not all about walking, about doing. But it's about that right there. No one else, no one else had a love like that. I mean, she humiliated herself. She spent all that she had just to anoint him. We, we, I was at this one church and we've done this uh, skit. And I, I cleared everything from the front. I had a table. I had chairs. I had men sitting around in the chairs facing the audience. And I had one man. Now, when I told him he was going to portray Jesus, his wife looked at me real funny. <laughs> Y'all get that in a minute. So we were sitting right there. The rest of them were around the back of the side. And his wife was going to be married. And which it kind of, I, I've heard of, you know, actors really putting everything in it, you know, the tears and everything. But it was so personal to her that when she run down to a, anoint the feet of Jesus and to wipe his feet with her hair, she looked up and tears was flowing down her face. It was personal. Amen. That's the way it should be with us. Yeah. It should be personal. Amen. So let's let's get into this message. See, we preached three parts about a, a journey that 
that different ones had that was involved in the birth of Jesus. We preached about the Magi's, the three wise men's journey to see Jesus. In Matthew chapter 2, verse 10 and 11, it says, When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. Yeah. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented them to him, gifts, gold, and frankincense, and myrrh. Then we preach the second message about the shepherd's journey to see Jesus in Luke 2 and 15. It says that it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, let us now go even into Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known to us. Right. And then we preach the third message. Uh, in Luke 2 and 4, where Joseph and Mary's journey to Bethlehem, it says that Joseph, all, Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth uh, to, Ju to Judea, uh, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. All these made a journey for the king. Amen. You said, but he was just a babe. He was born to be the king of the Jews. Amen? He was born to be king over Israel. It was not a matter of him waiting till he came to an age of accountability. He was born to be the king. And can I tell you something? He is still the king. Amen? Hallelujah. Well, my question here is what about your journey to see Jesus? Hallelujah. What about our journey to see Jesus? In Revelation chapter 2, the angel of the Lord appears to John the Revelator. In verse 4 it says, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left Thy first love. What is he talking about? He's talking about our love for Christ. Amen. You know, we, we can have tradition in his name. We can have personal beliefs in his name. We can have personal convictions in his name. We can work for him in his name. But if we do not love him, Amen. none of that matters. He's looking for someone that will return. Let's, let's, let's read this next verse, verse 5. Remember therefore from whence thou art falling and repent and do the first works. Or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of his place except I repent. Yeah. He's saying if you replace your love with your works, you have pushed me out of the picture. Amen. Not necessarily for everybody else, but for yourself. You can get busy doing everything each and every day in the name of Jesus. But until you show him your love. Yes. Amen. 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 Now you husbands. You soon to be husbands. You soon to be husbands only in your mind. If you do not show that wife that you love them and you only say it and walk out the door, they're going to question it. Because this is what they want. Now, I didn't mean to get into the marriage thing here. But we are. If, if you do not show them that you love them. They're not going to believe you when you say it. 
You may think they believe it. And don't you dare ever say, well, I married you, didn't I? I can tell you what happened there. And it's not pretty. Amen? What's you grinning about, brother? <laughs> Hallelujah. I know this is why I have a smile from here to here. <laughs> She'll be saying, peace, brother. Get on somebody else. <laughs> Show them. It's the same way with your relationship with Jesus. If you're busy doing everything, but you never stop and take time to show Him you love Him. Amen? Take time. Get, get along. Don't just let it be a thing while you're driving down the road. That's good. Don't just let it be a thing when you start to walk into the job place and you say, help me, Lord. Got to go in here amongst these evenings. Don't let it be that. Let it be some personal one-on-one -on -one time. Yes. Amen? Yes. Because if, if you are to show your wife love and you only show it in a certain way to let her know you love her, when people are around and you do not do that when you're alone? Come on. You think she doesn't catch on with that. Amen. God knows. God knows. He is looking for a relationship. It's a relationship. It's not just words. It's not just deeds. But it's proven that you love. You say, well, I'll die for you, Lord. So, why do you not get on your knees and pray to me? And talk with me? And love on me? Why do you not spend time in His presence, just you and Him alone? Amen. Amen. We've got to have that. Amen. We've got to have that. Amen. If I just ride by the service station and I do not stop and spend a little time putting that nozzle in the, the, the nozzle of the tank and, and hit the little buttons and pay for it, Spend a little time to allow fuel to flow into the tank. Then I'm running on empty. I'm running on empty. What I like is the new vehicles. The electric ones. That's what we need to do. Because it takes maybe five, ten minutes to put to put gas in your vehicle with gasoline, you know, or, or diesel. But when you hook up to an electric one, you better bring your lunch. <laughs> Amen? You know, maybe we need to do that. Bring our lunch in here. Yes. And, and get in the presence of God and, and pray a while and say, well, you know, I'm going to take a, a lunch break and then I'll get back at it. You know, and you know what I'm talking about. So he says here, if, if we leave our first love, then he will remove the candlestick out of its place, except we repent, say, Lord, I'm sorry for not having a personal, loving relationship with you. I want it, Lord. So what, what is he talking about, about removing the candlestick. I mean, what? What's he trying to say here? What did the angel mean? Let's, let's look at this. The church gave life in Ephesus. Life and light. 
And what he would do in regards to that place would be like removing a lamp and leaving that place in darkness. We, we spent the night with uh, the in-laws, her, her brother, my in-laws, her brother and his wife. And when Freda shut the door, she said, do we need to leave the door open a little bit? I said, just shut that thing. I said, just, well, let's just feel our way around. I said, once, once we're in the dark a little while, we'd be like hoot owls and we'd see in the dark. <laughs> she shut the door and turned off the light. And I mean, you could do like this and couldn't see anything. <coughs> what, what, if your, what if your soul was like that? Wow. wow. You know, with the light of Christ, you, you, I mean, even if everything's going bad, you still feel like you have life. If you know Jesus is living inside and you're in love with him and you have a personal relationship with him, you still feel like life is inside. But what if you quit feeling that life that's inside and it seems like total darkness? You know, when I first got married for about... I'm married, hallelujah. Pretty good. Well, if I had kept on with that one, she would have... <laughs> she would have had, come on, I want to talk to you. <laughs> when I first got saved, <laughs> is that better? <laughs> there was a cloud of darkness over me. <laughs> and see what I'm saying? If I had stayed with that conversation, that train of thought, I'd been in trouble. But when I first got saved, it was like a, a cloud of darkness over me for about two years. And I had to press my way through that. It was, it, it was a, it was a, it was a, just a roller coaster. But I knew I had life. I had something that I hadn't experienced in a long time. I knew I had life, and that's what kept me going. And one day, God moved that dark cloud. And the sun began to shine like it had never shined in my life. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, thank you. you don't want that darkness inside. Oh, Amen. You want the light of Jesus inside. Amen. Hallelujah. Because if you have the light of Jesus, when there's someone that's down, when there's someone that's lost, when there's someone that's hurting, you can step into their presence and bring light and bring life. Life comes with that light. You hear what I'm saying? It doesn't matter if this body is in the grave. If you have the light of Jesus in you, you still have life. Amen? Amen. So this is what we need. We need that. Restoring our passion for Christ. I, I'm going to make a bold statement that you cannot see God if you do not love Jesus. That's, right. <laughs> That's a bold statement to make. It's not about taking communion. We do that in remembrance of what he's done for us. But Jesus said that we have to love. Yes. What is God? Love. He's love. And if we're going to be like him, what have we got to be? Love. 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 Amen. Yeah. I know this is probably the shortest message I've ever preached, so you write that down. <laughs> Amen. That's okay. I would. I, 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 I didn't want to preach a long message. I wanted to give you what God had. Amen. And you know I don't, I don't use a, a watch for preaching. You know that more than anybody. <laughs> but I'm asking you this morning, 
you know, it, it, I, I'm, you know, I'm not going to call you out. I'm not going to ask you to come forward. But I'm going to ask you, do you feel like you, you need something restored in your spirit? Do you feel like you've gone through a lot of motions and you're asking God, why am I going through these motions? Why am I doing this and doing that and still feel lost on the inside? Still feel empty on the inside? Still wondering? Still asking you, Lord, am I really saved? Now, I don't, you probably don't do that. But there's some of us that do. Amen? It's just because what we're going through. What we're facing. Do you want something restored this morning? See, he's saying that, uh, that uh, I have someone against you because you have left your first love. Then he's saying, you know, repent. Just repent and everything will be all right. Come back to me and let, let it be about our love together. I'll take care of the rest. Yeah. But you just make sure you take care of what's between us. Amen? Sometimes you have to take care of what's between you and someone else. Amen? So I want you to stand with me this morning. And, and, and this is between you and God. Let's take care of, of that that's between us and Jesus. Let's make sure our love is a dedicated love. It's a passionate love for Him. Not to do works, but just to love Him. Just to love Him. Let's bow our heads. Father, thank You for this beautiful day that You have given us. Thank You for Your love, Lord. Thank You for, for coming to this earth, Lord. I, I'm talking about You stepped in the midst of turmoil, Lord. You stepped in the midst of accusations. You stepped in the midst of some angry people that would love to see you dead. But Lord, you have survived it all. You have come to this earth, born lowly. You have come to this earth. You know what we go through. You've experienced it, Lord. You've been there, done this, and you're here to help us, Lord. But God, what you're asking of us is that we love you with all of our heart, Lord. God, help us. Help us, Jesus. Help us this morning. Lord, help us restore this passion for our love for you. Restore it, Lord. Help us to realize that what is most important is to have quality time with you. Help us, Jesus, to realize that. To have quality time with you. Forgive us, Lord, for not doing that. Forgive us, Lord, for going days, sometimes weeks, without having that quality time with you. Coming to church doesn't make up for it. This is a personal relationship between the two of us. Help us and forgive us, Lord. Cleanse us. God, we want to fall in love with you all over again. We want our love and our passion for you to be greater than it's ever been. Help us, Jesus. Help us, Jesus. And God, we'll give you praise and glory and honor for this. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Praise his name. Praise his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.